Welcome to the Oddity Shop, where the bazaar is always on sale. Hello, everybody. Do we know how to do this? Welcome back to the Oddity Shop. I think we know how to do this. I at least said Oddity Shop this time and not the podcast. The, the podcast. podcast. <laughs> I am sitting here with Kara Parakovic. How are you doing today? Happy Pride! Oh, thank- yeah, it is the second day of Pride, isn't it? Even though when you listen to this, they won't be Pride. <laughs> oh, yes, that's true. It's always Pride. We, we have lots of Pride here at the Oddity Shop. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm but going to Pride, Pride this year. Yeah. I was going to ask you. I know you. Ferndale's is this weekend, but I'm going to be going to the... Tomorrow. Yeah. But in Grand Rapids, we have Festival of the Arts, which has a ton of food trucks. So I'm going to take that over Pride for sure. Plus, Julia helped put it on, and I want to go support her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll go to Grand Rapids. I don't know. Also, Pride is just a lot. And I don't know if right now in your life that's what... I don't know if that's the vibe. I just... I've never gone... You need gone, to relax. <laughs> exactly. I've never gone and went, wow, that was a wonderful time. Like, it's all just like everyday businesses putting rainbows on crap and trying to get you to subscribe to their business and i'm just like but it yeah it is fun though but it's like when you <laughs> we're gonna get canceled oh no <laughs> pride's gonna cancel us i'm just kidding but it is like when you go to that party that you're like i know i don't need to go to this party and you go and you do have a good time but when you wake up the next year morning you're like i literally could have had the exact amount of good time on my exactly couch. Although I think post 30, I think that about most things now. <laughs> well, I think that's why. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, happy um, Pride. All right. What do we, what do, we do we here? Ruined <laughs> We've ruined Pride. Um, Listen, we talk about whatever the fuck we want. As long as it kind of creeps you out. Because it's our podcast. And not yours. Uh, that just makes us sound like um, Trixie and Katia. Because it's our show and not yours. I think that's them, right? I don't know. But is that, do you hear that? Yep. Is that crickets? Okay, now that the crickets are removed from my room. Honestly, they're kind of relaxing, but I it almost sounded like because it's far away from me that it sounded like you know like when you have an old fan and it like yeah. makes that teeing sound. I thought it was my fan and I'm like, "Wait, my fan doesn't make that noise." By the way, I record in the same room that the reptiles live in. There is a reason there's a bucket of crickets in here. It's the baby's room. Um, all right. Well, what do you do you have anything fun for us? um anything to tell us let's see oh i finally played with the spirit box that you gave me and i know i sent you the video yes you did didn't catch much but i'm pretty sure i heard it catch or say my own name as the temperature sensor was no, it did. off on there okay so you listened to it like but it was off yeah that's when you turn the box off i guess the temperature sensor can stay on so i did figure that out but like okay. then it was still going off when i thought i heard it say my name but i've played it for like three or four other people and i think i'm not going crazy i think it actually did say my name no it did say your name say my name <laughs> i was just saying that too <laughs> um let's see what else i have oh a couple episodes back i told you all i got a flowering plant the orchid and i was gonna see how long it lasted it's dead i told you it lasted it to four episodes that's a lot longer than it, I thought. it would lose like a bloom a week but i'm holding out hope because i know this is also around the time that orchids do lose their blooms so i'm gonna keep it everything else is green and we'll see if it reblooms next year um okay well a couple episodes back if we're talking about that i did the tooth fairy and then I was like, and then what put me on this rant is that I was supposed to make a dentist appointment and then I never made the dentist appointment. Well, I finally did make the dentist appointment. I told you this. This is why I go. I did have some cavities. Uh, so I went and filled them. When was that? Like last week? I don't even know. Anyway, I think last week. my now new hygienist, because I'm not going to see anybody. Yeah, I'm not going to see anybody else. But when she did clean my teeth, her name is Alyssa. Shout out, girl. She was like, what do you do? And I was telling her. And then we started talking about podcasts. And then she's been listening to ours. And she like loves it. So I told you, Zach, that I, you know, I felt like a celebrity. Because I get my cavities like filled or whatever. And I heard her, but I didn't want to like, she's working. So I'm not going to go annoy her. Right. So I didn't get to see her that day. But I'm out at the counter, like checking out and she like comes up and she's like, I, oh my God, I wasn't going to say anything to you because I didn't want to be weird. And I hope this isn't weird, but I've been listening to your podcast and I love it. It's so, and I was like, Aww. oh my God. I'm like, yes. And then the lady at the front desk is like, what are we, like, what are we talking about? Maybe I need <laughs> to listen. And I'm like, I left and I literally was like, 
I came home and I'm like, honey, I'm a celebrity. All right. And he's like, <laughs> we've officially made it. We've gotten hate mail and you've been sort of recognized for the podcast in public. Well, yeah. But anyway, that was my high. <laughs> wow. We, we really made it, guys. We did. All right. What else you got for us, celebrity? I don't have a question for you. Don't. I am going to come for you. I expect a question every week. Sorry. Listen, this is this is part two. I kind of just wanted to bop on into it. I'll let it go this time. But by the end of the episode, I expect you to at least ask me one question along the way (laughs) or I will lose it. (laughs) I can't be serious for that long. What is wrong with you? Weren't serious at all. We could do. The tone of your voice. Oh, was but the lo- look I was giving you, which somebody else could see. We could literally do an entire episode on what's wrong with us, but that'll be maybe our hundredth episode. Like a bonus, <laughs> bonus. Okay, let's get into it, babes. This is part two of the Winchester Mystery House. Um, okay, so if you haven't listened to part one, I'm going to ask that you stop, go back, listen. It has a lot of insight and background to Sarah, and I think that. You need it's it. also the episode right before this one. It shouldn't be too hard for you to find. I we have faith. no, but you know, yeah. Anyway, because Kara, now that she's a celebrity, needs to hog the spotlight and go twice in a row. <laughs> okay, Sarah dealt with a tremendous amount of loss in a short amount of time. Uh, oh, uh, you know what? Also, a side note: I know that I struggled through a lot to pronounce. There were big words in that last episode, and guess what? I know I said shit wrong. I don't care. I care that you said it wrong, but that's okay. No, you don't. All right. So we left off with Sarah living in New Haven and her closest family members dying, leaving her to inherit $20 million plus nearly 50% of the Winchester Arms stock, which in turn earned her approximately $1,000 per day in royalties for the rest of her life. Here's your question. What would you do? With that much money, I'd buy a yacht. Mm. Straight up, I'd be a boat person. Would you live on the yacht permanently? Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe I'd forego like yacht and do like the typical like houseboat, the giant pontoon looking ones with a water slide. No, I'd get a yacht. And then I'd still have money left over. You could get both. Oh, I could get a houseboat that launches off the yacht. All right. We got plans. All right. This this made her what do you mean? You're not this is not you. <laughs> One day it will be. You don't know that. I could marry a gun baron or a lumber baron ah. going back to the Whitney. <laughs> Why do we just really love the word barren? We're you. just we're just barren it all for you guys. Okay, I hate me now too. If I was Nick, I'd break up with you. All right, making her one of the wealthiest women in the world at the time. So there is a lot of speculation and ever changing facts on how Sarah ended up in California. So here we go. Sarah had rheumatoid arthritis. So one theory or. Well, whatever. One theory I guess you could go with is that she had rheumatoid arthritis. Her doctor advised her to move to a warmer climate to alleviate the pain. It was also noted, though, that the move was because she had a lot of family already in California because her relatives had moved during 1849 Gold Rush, and they were all throughout Sacramento and throughout like Sacramento and the Bay Area. So those are two things. But Sarah might have believed that she was cursed because of all the misfortune she had recently, prompting her to just like want to like start fresh, move away. Goodbye, baby. I'm going to go with that one just based on now that I know her education and background. Right. But remember, I asked you in part one, if you built something that led to multiple deaths, would you feel guilty? I think I said yes. Yeah, you said, well, I think we went into like, depending on what the circumstance was. Sounds about right. But Sarah was also said to have confided in a medium that told her that all spirits of the people killed by the Winchester firearms had placed a curse on her family and would haunt her, haunt, 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 would haunt her forever. (laughs) So the house was built as a labyrinth to confuse the spirits or to appease them, depending on which way you go. So whatever way you feel is correct, go with it. I kind of think it's a combination of everything. Maybe it was to confuse the bad ones, but to appease the good ones. Right. But she did have rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm sure like, cool, go to Cali, babe. Uh, Her family was there. That is a fact. And she did have a lot of misfortune. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's a mix of all the things that made her move there. Yeah, I don't maybe I don't necessarily think that it was like one thing that drew her to. I think about that, though, like with every time I've moved, it's always been more than one reason. Yeah. So whatever way you decide, 
sometime between 1884 and 1886, Sarah bought her new home, in, which is now San Jose, California. I don't want to just like glide over how she got there. But like I said, there's a lot of speculation and we'll just go with all of it. I did read that Sarah went on a three-year world tour before making it to California. I bet she went on a houseboat. <laughs> Thank God. I, I think she did do this, but I do have to just put in here that I don't know. I don't know what to say about that because if you were afraid of spirits killing you or whatever, or the fear of like all this misfortune of all of this, like, I don't know if you would just, I don't know. I don't know. It could track, though, in the way, though, like she was involved in like a lot of spiritualism and expanding her mind. It wouldn't be That's too true. far off for somebody to want to go get different cultural experiences as well. This is true. And I guess you still are getting away from New Haven. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, she gets to California. So at this time, the home was already an eight bedroom floor house. And I practically have a four bedroom house and I can't do it. I always thought she built it from the ground up. No, it was a doctor owned it um, and it was a four bedroom farmhouse. And I just can't imagine. I can't imagine having an eight bedroom farmhouse as a single woman. And that is nothing into comparison to what it becomes. Yeah, but if you had $20 million, somebody is cleaning that for you. I know, but still. So WinchesterMysteryHouse.com refers to the house as what can only be described as the longest renovation. This is because <laughs> renovations only stopped when Sarah died in 1922. So if we say that she started, let's just say it wasn't 1884, it was 1886. So we say she's, she started in 1886. And she renovated her home for almost 40 years. 38 years, this woman made changes over and over and over. I renovated my bathroom in a weekend, and that mess drove me crazy. I can't even imagine. Girl, listen. It was described as a marathon of constructions, costing millions. At the time, I don't know at what point, but it was allegedly $5.5 million, which was a shit ton of money at that time. I don't know what the calculation is now, but... I even wrote in my notes, I couldn't even go a year with demoing my house. I would have died if I had 40 years. Yikes. Also, living in the house while renovating, you can attest like that is, I don't recommend that. And I, she did. Well, she had a few other rooms she could go in. I was going to say, obviously, the house was bigger, so it probably didn't feel that much. You don't even hear the construction from the other room. Right. So... Sarah hired approximately 20 carpenters to work on her home. <laughs> she was the one and only architect, which allowed her full creative control. 20! I mean, it's insane if you're thinking about it from a house standpoint, but if you're thinking about it from like a larger building, which is what this turned into, that's not two. Is it 20 at a time or 20 over 40 years? No, let, mm, tw 20. So part one comes in handy here. If you remember Rudolf, Rudolf Steiner, he was the one that viewed the universe as a vast living organism in which all things are likened to in, in oh my God, individually evolving units or cells that comprise a greater universal synergy, synergistic body that is ever building, blah, blah, blah. But remember, I told you to remember ever building. Yes, I remember. These carpenters had rotating shifts allowing for 24-hour days, seven days a week, 365 days a year. With this demanding work structure, I'm sure you can only imagine how fast, <laughs> how fast this eight-bedroom house grew. 20 carpenters working 24-hour shifts every day of the week, every day of the year. Girl never slept. Well, like you said, she probably went to a different room and couldn't hear shit. Well, I guess I'm right. <laughs> that's insane to me that's a lot of people in your house right <laughs> okay so the house is considered a victorian style but don't let that fool you because it's odd and bizarre some areas of the house grew upwards of seven stories and that sounds wild but when you break it down it, it just gets more wild seven stories that's insane for a house that's even like Back to like the mansions in New Orleans that we walked by, like four or five was insane for and some that, Right. Seven stories. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the mystery house is said to have 160 rooms. 
I will say that some accounts say it's up to the 500s. But if we go off winchestermysteryhouse.com, which is probably the most accurate because they do the tours, it's up to one. It, it's said to be 160. That's still insane to me. 160 rooms. Well, it's probably hard to even classify it because like there's right. so many weird hallways and stuff like what's yeah. a room. Right. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you take the virtual tool that tour that they offer. It's really cool and informative. And man, I can't speak. Mm-hmm. Informative. Um, I got a lot of information from there, which I purchased it so you can watch it. <laughs> Fantastic. Send it to me. It's $5.99 to rent or $13.99 to own. So I was like, Meh, I might want to watch it again. <laughs> That's so stupid. Why did I do that? So I can watch it. Thank you. Right. All right. Either way, if you go with the 500s or the 160, that's a lot of damn rooms. It's crazy. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. The house contained a mirror, 52 skylights, 47 fireplaces, 40 bedrooms, 40 staircases, 13 bathrooms, six kitchens, three elevators, two basements. Two basements? Are they just How is not that even connected? possible? I don't think so. 13 bathrooms. Did I say that? Yes. One shower, which was pretty modern at the time because it was designed to have water on both sides of you instead of just above you. So now, you know, there's fancy showers that have right. like, but it was designed to do that. The only catch was you had to be four foot 10 <laughs> inches like Sarah <laughs> because otherwise you weren't getting Well, that's that. what happens when the short person is also the architect. Right. Uh, there was 10,000 windows and 2,000 doors. Okay. What was the, the very first thing you said though was just one mirror? No, I just said the house can, contained a mirror, 52 skylights. So is there only one mirror in all this, this entire house? Oh, mirror! <laughs> <laughs> Don't I got it. Any of this. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm like, wait, how do I explain this to you right now? <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm hot. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I love you so much. I love you too. Wait, was it the last episode where you were like, what word did I say? And you're like, I'm so sorry. Is that even a word? And I'm like, please don't do this to me again. I don't even remember what it was. I I know we argued about glowed. (laughs) I can't. I can't breathe. I'm dying. (sighs) Okay. Okay. One mirror. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. (sighs) Okay. So... (laughs) <laughs> obviously that's a lot and that seems really wild but the house as i mentioned in part one is a labyrinth there are doors on doors doors leading to nowhere or to your death if you enter the one that drops off the side of the house causing you to fall 12 feet onto a sidewalk <laughs> it's well, i mean i know you've seen it but it's literally <laughs> you probably won't die but your femur is going to go into your chest cavity well then that would make me want to die Fair enough. But it literally is just a door on the side of the house. And they actually have a plaque on it that says the door to nowhere now. (laughs) I swear, though, if you were to just walk through that hallway or whatever it is and just open that door and like didn't think twice, you'd literally walk off to 12 feet into I would hope nobody in that house is walking around without thinking twice. I mean, I would hope that you were just... You're just like... You're like a maid kind of on um, autopilot. You're new. You know, just like, and you whoop. Oh, and whoop. The tray stays up, though. <laughs> I can't right now. Okay. <laughs> so there are doors that just open into walls, staircases that lead to dead ends, or just like a, like a bare wall, like it just goes to a wall. Or There's a wall there's- of bears. Okay, no, I, I actually heard you right this time. Do you feel the most powerful and beautiful with the elements of the earth around you? Do you like one-of-a-kind jewelry? Do you sometimes feel like a woodland fairy? Me too. That's why I created Holly and Hemlock, a magical shop filled with handmade wooden jewelry and metaphysical tools. Come check out our enchanting wooden wares at www.hollyhemlock.com and join us in honoring the magic and beauty of nature with each unique creation. That's www.hollyhemlock.com. And then there's like a staircase that literally just leads you to the ceiling. Like you just go up to the ceiling. 
Yeah, I think in Sam and Colby's episode, I think they go up that one and it's just like the ceilings right there. <laughs> like, oh my God. There are skylights that are embedded into the floor that have like almost like um like staircase railings just like all around it. So it's literally just like a skylight that you think that would be on the ceiling, but it's just in the floor. So it looks like into a room below it? Yeah, but it around it is just like a banister, almost like a stair. What would be like almost like a stair? These weird. are portals. Perhaps. There are some skylights, though, that are covered by additional skylights. <laughs> and some skylights that are just covered by a roof. That just, well, she didn't get her degree in architecture, so we'll forgive her. There are literally rooms within other rooms. Can you, can you imagine these contractors? They're like, Sarah, we can't do this. She goes, just... Just do it. Oh, you're going to do it, girl. You're going to do it today. Just did the best they could. This will never work. Just get it done. (laughs) The spirits are coming. We've all had that boss like that that just won't listen to logic. They're like, just get it done. And you want it. It's like um, malicious compliance. Can you explain to me how you'd like me to get this done? No, just figure it out. You can figure it out. We just want you to draw a blue line with red ink. That's it. (laughs) That's all I'm asking. It's not that difficult. You've seen a blue line before. Okay, I can go on. (laughs) I'm having flashbacks to terrible jobs in the past. Oh my god. Okay, so there was a water tower that stood behind the house that was invent like eventually it almost engulfed into the um construction. So it just had to be incorporated into the house because of all of the add-ons. At least you could tap into an easy water supply. I, you know, I don't know if they actually, if it was able to be kept as the water. There was eventually another water tower built, so I don't know. <laughs> that shower but, isn't yes. going to feed itself. <laughs> there is a room, a storage room. There, it's a $25,000 storage room because of all the stuff that's in it. All the items in the room, though, are valued well over that right now. Some being stained glass purchased from the Tiffany Glass Company of New York, which we talked about in the Whitney episode. But there's like multiple of those just in this room, not even on the wall. They're just it's a storage room of all of these like stained glass. Like some of them were actually handcrafted. Well, I shouldn't say handcrafted, but designed by Sarah there. It's crazy. Take the tour, people. In real life, hopefully, but virtually five ninety nine <laughs> or thirteen ninety nine if you want to watch it. Over if you want to own over. it, <laughs> um, this this is crazy to me, and I feel like this is common. But one staircase has forty four steps, makes seven complete turns in total, and is a hundred feet in length. And it just leads to the second floor. <laughs> I was with you until that part, like. I'm pretty sure Sam and Colby also did that because it was like, turn, 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 turn. And they're like, oh, my well, God. I'm like, you know, thinking like spiral staircase or something, you know, like I could see one with seven turns no. and 144 steps or whatever. But how does that only take you to the second floor? Wait, in 100 feet? <laughs> it's wild. Go on. Just go on. <laughs> we need to go. We have to go so bad. If it wasn't 92 degrees out, I was going to wear my Winchester sweatshirt again just because I want to manifest it. I mean, we're going to go. It's not we'll like go. it's a big deal. We're going. Okay. Patch- passages and stairways seem to serve as like shortcuts that allow you to leap from one side of the house to the other, according to the truth about Sarah Winchester.com. So they basically are like, it's almost like a portal. Like you just bop to like the other side of the house by like all these weird shortcuts and like things. And I, I keep saying house, but we know it's a damn mansion. It's a more than a mansion. It's, I don't know what it is. All right. So here are some of the like specific rooms that I want to touch on. The first one is the seance room. It's in the center of the house, or they say almost the center of the house, because I think at one point it directly was the center, but, you know, we've had it on a lot of shit. This was being used allegedly to talk to the spirits and get instructions on the designs of the house. Only one person was allowed in the room. That was Sarah. And she has had to have spent hours in there talking to herself and she was the only one with the key to that house or to that room she was not talking to herself well i know but that's what like people are like you know she's in there talking to herself right but we know she was talking to her spirit friends or enemies whichever way you want to go here's the thing though she was designing okay well without getting too much into that part of it because we're talking about the house right now but that's what makes me think that like if these spirits are this house with a labyrinth to confuse the spirits because they were after her, 
Why would you spend hours talking to them on how to design the house? That doesn't even make sense to me. No. Does it? No. Unless you're like, either confusing them. Like I said, afraid. it's like the good spirits and the bad spirits sort of deal. Yeah, maybe she's talking to like her family members and stuff or like, I don't know. But there's actually an eight foot drop in the floor. So it's like a cutout, like a square cutout. And it's an eight foot drop in the floor of the seance room that looks into one of the kitchens. So she could like hear anything that's going on in there. But it's like, <laughs> why? Is there a skylight at least? Or like if you no. drop something, it would just bloop right into yeah. the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. And there are also bars on the windows in that room. And that's the only room that has these bars on the windows for no apparent reason or no seemingly apparent reason. Interesting. There are also three entrances to that room. Or I'm sorry. There is one entrance to that room, but three exits. One of the exits is almost like a secret passage locking you in if the door closed behind you. Oh. So it's designed to like... It's like a secret passage, but once you're in, it locks behind you and you're like in there. And with only one entrance that she is the key to? Yes. Yes. Oh. Like what? If I was her, I would lock myself in that room accidentally so hard. <laughs> Do you know how many times a month oh I lock Lord. myself out of my own house? I have mastered okay. the art of breaking into my own house. You, the way you said it, like you would do it intentionally, like you're done with the world. You're just saying like on accident, oh, yeah. you would lock yourself. Accidentally oh, so no. hard. Yeah, I, it was misleading. Maybe when I'm done with the world too, I'll be like, peace out. I'm gonna go play Houdini for five days. Right. That's really funny because Houdini visited the house. But I'm not getting into mm. that just yet. All right. So like Zach and I, Sarah loved plants. So she had an 18 acre garden around the house but also needed two conservatories, one having a built-in water system. And this is like so crazy and cool to me, but the floorboards actually lifted up. So there were like squared floorboards or whatever. They lifted up and then the plants could be watered on the metal lining that was under the floorboards. And then it would, the lining, like you'd water and then the water would be drained into a drain system that's like filtered. But it was like, so advanced and crazy, but so freaking cool. And she also had eight to ten gardeners to keep up with all her gardens. I was just going to say, I can't even water my own plants all the time. Yeah, we know. You killed that orchid. I watered it. I just did it wrong. <laughs> Turn that spirit box on and ask for Sarah to come help you. Maybe she has <laughs> some ideas. <laughs> all right. Um, another room or rooms is the Hall of Fires. So these are three joining rooms. That had four fireplaces and three hot air registers that literally just heat you up, baby, smoke you out. And this is probably because Sarah would like crank it up and the heat would relieve her pain that she endured from her arthritis. That's kind of the thought mm. of it. I don't know, though. That seems like a lot. Didn't they have saunas back then? She was just cold at night, man. It's California. I mean, I know Californians. Californians? Yeah. What are they called? Californians. They get cold, but like she was not from there. So I'm sure, I don't know. That seems excessive. It does. <laughs> it's fine. So is it there's four fireplaces in the hallway or four fireplaces in no, each room? No, so they, they call it the Hall of Fires, but it's three rooms that can join essentially. Okay. And between those rooms, there are four fireplaces and three hot air registers. So you could just sit in them, probably in the middle of all these rooms, and just get toasted up like a little marshmallow. I think she was just bad at planning. Leave her alone. She's going to come for you. <laughs> she ain't going to come for me because I love her. Um, The crescent hedge. This is, well, a, a giant hedge that's a crescent shaped. <laughs> it's on the property. And this is supposed to hold some spiritualistic meaning to Sarah. And I, I just had to put this in here, but it also points to the room that she died in. Ooh. I don't know if that means anything, but put it in there. Um, The bell, like the bell tower, there's there's two bell towers. I was going to say, there's no way she only has just one bell tower. Well, yeah, because I think one got damaged at one point. But the bell tower, um, and it, it was said to ring at 12 and 5 for the certain servants to come in for their meals. But some people say that they heard it ring at midnight and 2, 2 a.m. And that was said because it alerted and or released the spirits for her seances. Everyone's on a bell system. It, right? The witch's cap, which I think is kind of probably my favorite room. I think it's cool. 
Um, this was once said to be the most important room to Sarah. And the description is like what it is. It's a pointed ceiling, like mimicking a, a witch's hat. And there's supposedly like a really odd and eerie echo, but only if you stand directly under the point. So like if you were under the point, like in the center of the room, there's supposed to be like this really weird, uncomfortable feeling and like an echo. Interesting. And I don't, I don't think you watched the Sam and Colby episode when um, Call Me Chris and um, yeah. Selena Spooky Boo went. And I think that was the room where Selena was like, I don't feel good in here. I'm pretty sure it was that one where she was like, yeah, I got to get out of here. I think so, I could too. Be wrong, but yeah. And then the third floor was dedicated for the servants, like for their parlor and the housekeeper's office. Sarah had call buttons, which I think this is kind of advanced she had call buttons for all her servants but each button like when she pushed the button it would direct them to what room she was in so that they knew what room to go to what year is this again 1886 was there electricity yeah oh yeah 18 okay when was electricity made (laughs) we talked about this in the whitney and i don't remember we're idiots okay 1882 so is when electric started to get put into houses. So she's like w- right on the cutting edge. She was pretty advanced. I want to call a button. They have intercoms and shit now. Make Julia bring me snacks. Who are you going to call? Julia, you can literally just text her. <laughs> I'll just do it through the Google Home. You know how you can like send messages through the whole house? I'm sorry, Julia. And on all accounts, though, Sarah was a wonderful employer. So even though she had these call buttons and it sounds excessive, she was a wonderful employer. employer. People loved her and they were very loyal. And she actually paid them twice as much as the going rate, which I think that that really shows you because especially like in that time frame, like I don't think people thought of that. Like you're just a servant or whatever. Like that's just what you get. Like it's not. Well, I think going back to like episode one with her humanitarian education Mm -hmm. and everything else like that, it definitely speaks to like her values. Yeah. So but apparently like everybody was so loyal to her that like even if you were on these crazy shifts and stuff like that, like nobody was just like quitting and being, you know what I mean? Like not if you're getting paid twice the going rate. But also but you were taking care of like family. And I think that was like the most important thing is that they did turn into our family. It's like Olive Garden. Is that, What is that? We're family when here? When you're here, you're family. What's the one that says we're family here? Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Boston Market. What's Boston Market? Uh, is Boston Market still alive? Hold on. <laughs> Wait, no, there's a different one that is like... Boston Market is nobody does it like we do. I think you're thinking of Olive Garden. Tell me the Olive Garden one again. When you're here, you're family. Oh, maybe. I only had to say it three times. I don't really like Olive Garden. I love their endless breadsticks, though. Mm, even those aren't great. Last time I was there, I found one of those like little paper rings they put around the silverware in my Coke after I drank the Coke. What the fuck? Yeah, I haven't been That's back That's not since. the worst thing I found in my food at a restaurant, but it's fine. Okay, so there are obviously so many rooms and oddities to the house that we could we literally could sit here forever. And I I don't even I don't even know how to actually sit here. And like, I was having a really hard time writing this, this part of the episode, because I can give you the statistics of how many rooms and skylights and fireplaces. But when you that 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 doesn't, that doesn't do it justice. If you don't know what we're talking about, or you haven't seen it or whatever, it's, it's un believable and i don't think there's anything else like it what is what is your favorite room even if it's not what i talked about like what's your or like what would you want to see the most i always like the staircases that go to nowhere yes it's so cool and weird and it's like all that like dark almost like cherry colored wood yes it's beautiful it's all so beautiful and all the stained glass i always like that and just the outside of it it's so odd it's gorgeous i just i would love to walk through the gardens oh we're gonna we're gonna Okay. Um, well, look at I asked you a couple questions about the episode, like you said. I'm so proud of you. So the earthquake of 1906 was the only distraction in the renovations. It was an 8.3 on the Richter scale, resulting in the top three floors needing to be completely removed. And a lot of the fourth floor had to be actually closed off, like closure. Adding to the damage, most of the brick chimneys collapsed. And one actually shifted and it shifted so much that like a wall shifted and it jammed a door shut and Sarah was actually in that room. And it took like a couple hours for the servants to find her because she was like stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Um, And she was recovered by the servants and she was okay, but they had to use a crowbar to get her out. And 
it's actually the mark of the crowbar is indented in the door frame and it's still in the house. Oh, that's cool. I wonder if mm-hmm. having to like redo the third and fourth floors gives way to some like the well skylight weirdness. Because and... it's it's not a seven story home anymore because she never rebuilt those three floors. Oh. So I think it's just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's only four now. And then half of the floor, fourth floor is just like she had it all completely shut off. Like you can't even get in there. Like all those rooms are there, but they're completely blocked just like off. Walled off. And they're all just like, they're not even redone. Like to this day, they're not even redone. Interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. But Sarah was so shaken. Um, and she thought that this was a warning that she had spent too much time on the front of the house, causing her to board up. 30, 30 rooms, like the first 30 rooms. She just boarded them all up and was like, nope. And they remained boarded up until her death. Talk about like compartmentalization in its purest form. So this is what though I'll touch really quickly. And I think that if you do watch the tour, it's really awesome. But you should watch Sam and Colby's episode because they get a, they get like a guided tour a little bit, like a, somebody that works there. And the, and I think a medium goes, I can't remember, but not just them. They're a medium friend. No, they didn't know this lady. She was somebody they didn't know. It wasn't um, Amanda. But what, and just like what we all learned in the first episode is that she was so much more than crazy. People dubbed her as crazy, insane, weird. Like she didn't really leave her house a lot. Like she, she probably couldn't find her way out. Probably not. But she was a, a very intelligent woman. So I th- I don't know. I just think that I don't I don't know. I don't know. I just had to put that in there. Sarah did end up purchasing an additional home in 1910 in Atherton. And this was to be closer to her sister and her niece, Daisy. So she didn't leave the mansion. That was hers. But she had another home. And sadly, in 1922, Sarah dies at the age of 83, leaving her niece to inherit $3,000 The contents from both of Sarah's houses, so the mansion and the other house that she bought, and an income of $200,000 trust fund. At the time of her death, the mystery house was said to not even be fully furnished, furnished, and it took eight truckloads a day. Eight, eight truckloads a day for seven weeks to empty out the house. And it was like three-fourths furnished. Furnished. Okay. Let's let's go back. Okay. She had a twenty million dollar fortune, and her niece gets three grand in a two hundred thousand dollar trust fund. By the way, all the upkeep on a hundred and sixty room mansion. I'd be pissed. I'd be loading her shit up in trucks too and hawk. Yeah, it. but she got to sell the house and then sell both houses. She didn't have to keep them. And let's get real. That's just what that might not be exactly what she got. This is a long time ago. True. But eight truckloads a day for seven weeks just to empty a three-fourths full house. Mansion. What is this? It's not even a mansion. It's a labyrinth. I think that's the only way you can describe it. A labyrinth. Yeah, it's wild. But that is part two of the Winchester Mystery House. And Zach is as surprised as you are to know that part three is still on its way, baby. I knew it was coming because I've been looking down at the clock and I'm like... We haven't even gotten into the spirits. We got. We haven't gotten into anything. Good Lord. I mean, I don't mean that. The, the third episode might not be as long, but there was way, way, way too much to like still dive into. The spiritualism, the weird antics that she had in certain rooms with certain numbers and what they meant, and the actual time that she spent in her seance room. And so I was like, I ain't even going to rush this baby. We're going to talk about the house. And then we can't go again. Because like, I feel like I've heard a lot of part three, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a totally different perspective going into it. Now knowing her educational background, she's already so different to me. And then recapping (laughs) the house. So I'm I'm excited to see how you pull it all together. So now earlier, though, when we were like, okay, this day is going to be this episode and this episode. You saw why I was so confused. Yeah, I was trying to be like, I didn't want to tell you. But I'm like, this is going to be a three parter. I'm so sorry. Well, actually, it's good for you because it just delays you having to do anything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but yeah, I I didn't want to jam the house plus all of that stuff into one because I think that stuff needs its own. The house needs its own and that stuff needs its own. So that is part two. 
Stick around for part three. But I will say, if you haven't, if you don't know what we're talking about, first off, just go look at pictures. If you have the money to pay for the tour, take just rent it or look on YouTube. Watch Sam and Colby's episode. They go through pretty much all the rooms that I've talked about, and you can at least kind of get a visual because it's wild. I, I I know I didn't do it justice on explaining it because you just can't. No, you have to see it visually. So cool. All right. Well, stick around, everybody. Part three is coming. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks for listening. And as always, if you find this interesting, share it with at least one friend, please. Or two. Or two. If you have that many. Yeah. Like our stuff. Talk to me on socials. And, uh, you know, most importantly, creep it real, yadballs. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Yeah.